Hi, I'm Claire Barley and welcome back to the home of EDFL Web TV, the Pasco Vale Hotel. This season, we'll be coming to you weekly right here on the EDFL YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all our videos. It's been another action-packed week in the EDFL, so let's jump straight into this week's top talking points. Hello everyone, we're at Windy Hill this week for EDFL Web TV and I am joined by Adam Sarakoglu and Dave Kennedy to break down this week's feature game. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks Claire. Good to be at the home of EDFL footy and uh, we're just creeping closer to September, which is always exciting. Windy Hill, the home of the Bomber, always good to return uh, to this fortress and uh, looking forward to tucking in some EDFL footy review. We're in Strathmore Community Bank Division 2 the, the weekend, where Roxburgh Hark had an impressive win against Coburg Districts. Let's throw to the highlights. So Adam and Dave, does this make Roxburgh Park the clear number one favourite uh, to an unbeaten Hadfield? Oh, I'll go first, Dave. Um, number one uh, contender, yes. Clear, probably not. I think Community Valley will have a lot to say about that, but Roxy, very, very impressive and uh, probably did a bit more than I was expecting against the districts on the weekend. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like uh, Roxburgh Park were um, reasonably good. I still feel like they've got more in them, though, so I think that does make them the, the number two to Hadfield, yeah. On the weekend, what do you think went wrong for Coburg Districts? Well, I think Coburg Districts, that they, although they won the clearances, they lost uh, the centre clearances, I should say. They lost the clearances around the ground. They lost significantly. I think Chris Tankard said post-match they lost inside 50s by 40. So if you're four, minus 40 inside 50s, well, you're going to really struggle to win a game of football. So they just need to get more of the ball inside 50, and uh, they needed to take more marks inside 50 as opposed to further up the ground. Do you think Coburg Districts coach Chris Tankard was hard on his team? No, um, I think the quote was they should have lost by three figures or something along those lines, and I probably agree with that, Dave. Um, you know, Roxy's kicking was absolutely terrible throughout the day, kept uh, letting the districts back into the game basically with some of that kicking, and uh, they were just running all over Kobeck districts on the day, so I pretty much agreed with, uh, with Chris Tankard on that occasion. Yeah, well, he was the one that brought up the, the minus 40 inside 50 stats, so... Hard to, hard to disagree with him there, really. How impressed were you with Roxburgh Park, particularly their forward line? Yeah, look, uh, I don't know about the forward line so much, but that midfield, they really move the ball really well. I really like the way they run across the ground, which is what you need in Division 2 in particular, and uh, that's probably what they got. Coburg Districts was uh, just a bit more speed, and they're a very tall side, Coburg Districts. That's where they got them. But that forward line, Matt Walker, I was expecting, you know, we've seen him kick a lot of goals this year. I was expecting him to be sort of a key forward uh, you know, big imposing type, but he's not, he's a little fella, and uh, he's a quite a quite an impressive young player. Well, Adam, um, this is the post-Mickelson era, and they've got a, the, a, a, a balanced forward line at Roxburgh Park. I think that was the most impressive attribute of the forward line, was it was a good mix of talls and smalls as well. As you say, Matt Walker as a small forward, and uh, Jaden Walker also popping up as the tall forward. Thanks, guys. For a wrap-up of all the other games from Round 9, click through to the EDFL YouTube channel and listen to this week's podcast. Now let's throw to our Sports Moves Player of the Week, Jaden Walker, the Roxburgh Park coach, Paul Derrick, and the Coburg Districts coach, Chris Tankard. It's just something I've really worked hard over the pre-season. The work rate, um, struggled last year a bit by running. It was always a little bit slower, so this year just thought I'd work hard over pre-season, make the most, playing at centre forward, just push up and back all day. So I played my junior footy at Roxy to about under-14s. I've been made a move to Greenville, been there since, and just through the year with my cousin Matt here, just getting into my ear a little bit, so I thought, why not come across, have a crack here, so. You pushed Hadfield, you exchanged the lead with him at every break, yep. you must feel like you're close, but what's it going to take to actually beat him next time around? Oh, like you said, we pushed Hadfield, we um, took a lot from the game, even though we got beat, unfortunately we got run over in the last quarter, but we were three goals up, kind of going into that last quarter, and five years just run out of legs with a couple of injuries, but... Like you said, we like I said, we took a lot from that game. So hopefully going forward, like got Jakarta, uh, Muni Valley next week, Jakarta week after that. So hopefully from that Hadfield game, that was kind of a learning point for us. So hopefully for me, just push, keep pushing forward. Uh, I thought the first half, we probably let ourselves down a little bit with our scoring and stuff like that, and our work rate dropped a bit. Our rotations went missing that second half of the second quarter. We spoke about that at half time, and they just got really desperate, the boys in the end, worked really hard for each other push back, uh, did all the right things that we ask them every week and this win, probably not just this win, but this win's huge for us because we're on that verge with Jakarta and a couple other sides and we sort of need to win these games. Now we have to ask because we've, we've seen your team do something that we don't even see at Premier. At Premier clubs they might go grab a beer and take the boots off and, and walk around and, and have a few pats on the back, 
you guys are doing deactivation warm downs out on the second oval. What's the story behind that? Is that your initiative or a fitness coach's initiative? Or uh, what's the story there? Yeah, one of our trainers is with the Calder Cannons, and, th and that's what they do. And we've had, um, well, average eight injuries, eight injuries a week. Probably haven't had a full side in yet, and that's mainly beca been because of hamstrings, things like that. So we're just working on things to get that right. So each week we can pick our best side. And hopefully we're getting near that now. Yeah, yeah. Shannon, Shannon was um, played a lot of twos and played in the granny last year, and there were some really good signs. We talked to him pre-season about stepping it up, and he has. He's really stepped it up, and his work rate's massive. There's him, Jade, and Timmy Black who are pretty, really mobile down there, so they get to move around a lot. But Matty Walker's a freak. I mean, you know, he's he's pretty special. Why he's, why he's playing this great hasn't been given a chance elsewhere. I'm surprised because to me he's the best young kid in the comp. He's still not 18, I don't think so. You know, he's just something special and we're lucky to have him. But it's just hard work, boys, working the structures, working the setups, doing the right thing for each other. Like I was telling them, you don't have to kick 10, but if you can create eight, well, that gives us, you know, goals, avenues to goal. And they're, they're pretty close bunch and they work together. Jaden Walker's obviously come from Greenvale, which was a massive pickup for us. But it's not just what he does. He, he talks a lot to the other guys and sets them up a lot. And um, he's really good. He's You know, he comes from a high grade of football and he's smart. And he's brought a lot to our team as well and just talking to the guys and boosting their confidence. But... As long as we work hard, give an option, the tools give us something to kick to, and our smalls, we rate as pretty good quality. You've got Brad Dimitch, who's just a hard, hard 16-year-old kid who's tough as nails. Blokes like that around the fall of the ball, we're you know, confident we can score big. Oh, look, I thought we defended really well. Like We're minus 42 inside 50, which you deserve to lose a game, and we did. Um, but I thought our back six sort of controlled that, and we pushed them wide, which we wanted to do. Um, just structure-wise, we allowed them to get off the back of the pack a lot, even though we, you know, we probably broke even at stoppage. They got the ball in a lot cleaner because our blokes didn't stick to what they wanted to do, and then they allowed them to have an out number at the back of the contest, um, and then you know, just use the ground really wide and make us chase and defend. You guys won centre clearances pretty convincingly, but around the ground stoppages, one thing we noticed was there was just a lack of body on body, and Roxburgh Park had too many uncontested takeaways uh, from yeah, stoppages. Definitely, definitely. Uh, as far as trying to change that once the tone of the game has been set, is there actually much the coaching staff can do, or is it more a matter of you hope the players can recognise it and execute? Oh, look, that's a coaching thing, mate. We, we, we're off the ground, we get to see that. So as coaches, we have to identify and rectify that. So we will bring guys off to explain how we wanted to set up and how we wanted to address that situation. We allowed them to run through stoppage and get goal side of us pretty quickly, which allowed you know, many times for them to get a forward entry, and we just didn't allow for it. Hadfield did the same thing to us. We've trained for it for weeks, and unfortunately today was just one of those days where we just didn't execute that part of the game very well. I'm actually happy with the margin where it was. I thought we should have lost by over 100 today. Why should your company advertise on EDFL Web TV? EDFL Web TV reaches an audience drawing from the biggest sporting body in Melbourne's expanding northwestern suburban corridor with over 9,000 participants and tens of thousands of families and fans distributed on a network reaching thousands of tech-savvy social media subscribers. EDFL Web TV can present your company's product or service in a top-of-the-show billboard, similar to a network TV sports broadcast, either with vision or still graphics. Sponsored segments are available and can be integrated into the regular week-to-week -week show. EDFL Web TV is also compatible with conventional TV ads, either professionally made or made by the EDFL. Customise your advertising package to reach the EDFL Web TV and social media audience today. Now on EDFL Web TV, it's time to talk about Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division. Teo Pelizzeri joined by Adam Russell here. Adam, uh, you were at the grand final rematch in Premier at the weekend. Tell us what happened at Clifton Park when Aberfeldy took on Strathmore. Yeah, it was a really uh, interesting game, Teo. We had Aberfeldy really looking a class above against a, a Strathmore side that put in a, a fair effort, but 10 goals the final margin. I think that top three of uh, the Premier Division are just a little bit class above. Well, uh, tell us uh, who played well for Aberfeldy and, and what they did to break the game open and, and win by the margin that they did. Well, my best on ground was uh, Jack McNamara, and after the game, Adam Potter did agree with me. Uh, McNamara, he played a, a high half forward role in that first quarter, but then with the injury to Courtney Johns, he did cop a, a knock to the head and didn't finish the game due to concussion. McNamara, he got forced into the ruck, and he uh, put up a really strong effort, high intensity stuff, and uh, 
I, he was, I was really impressed by his, uh, his game. And Strathmore, uh, on a tough run at the moment, they haven't really been able to get close to the top three, but then again, no one has. So what, what positives can they take away from this one in spite of the big losing margin? Well, despite the losing margin, it was a, it was a good game of football by Strathmore. They didn't do anything wrong. It was just that Abbott Feldy were really just that little bit, little bit better. But I think if, uh, if Strathmore could bring that kind of football up against a Marby Park, a Keelor, I think they'd be a fair chance and they'll, uh, they'll like their chances going for that fourth spot. Elsewhere in the division, we had a, a narrow win for Keelor getting over the line against West Coburg. Adam Sarakoglu will tell us about that on the podcast. And we also had Pasco Val keeping the, uh, the pristine record for the top three against the other seven teams by kicking away from Maribyrnong Park in the final quarter and getting a pretty handy win. But we go through every game in full on the podcast. And we've also got that Adam Potter interview as well if you click through to the EDFL YouTube channel. Adam, where would you like to start in Essendon Ford Division 1? Well, Taylor, it was the battle of second and third with the stars taking on Oak Park. How did that one go? Well, uh, it was one-sided in the end. I understand a, an injury to Reese Bloomfield was pretty important for Oak Park in that one, but uh, Essendon Duda Stars will be happy. They lost Aaron Kite to an injury uh, in the previous game, and then Cade Carey was back from an injury of his own. He played pretty well, and I've already seen the footage, and you can too. Essendon Duda Stars doing a great job filming their game and getting it turned around and up on YouTube. You can actually see it on the EDFL YouTube channel if you click through to the We Like playlist. There's actually a playlist there of videos that other users have uploaded that we've compiled there on the EDFL YouTube channel and the highlights of Duda's versus Oak Park are amongst it. Other talking points in uh, Division 1, Adam, well West Meadows had a pretty handy win against Hillside with Robbie Mullen kicking another seven goals so he, he must be moving into contention for the league medal at the moment and it's hard to judge where Taylor's Lakes are at because with the cloaks firing and I think Cam kicked eight at the weekend, Craigie Burner just uh, absolutely dominating at the moment and we talk about the top three yet to drop a game in uh, Premier Division what about the top two in Division 1? Can you see either Craigie Byrne or Essendon Duda Stars dropping a game to the rest of the league from here? Well, both teams have been so impressive so far, but I think the uh, I'm really interested to follow that that battle for finals between Oak Park... Uh Taylor Marine and West Meadows. Do you think Taylor's Lakes get a shout in there? Well, I'm sure Glen Roy and Taylor's Lakes would want to improve their form in the second half of the year and move away from that relegation battle. But uh, right now, it does look like three trying to go into two. We discuss all the talking points in depth on the EDFL Web TV podcast. Plus, we've got all the interviews from game day. So make sure you click through to the EDFL YouTube channel. Adam Russell, thanks for joining me here at Windy Hill. Always a pleasure, Tao. That's it for this edition of EDFL Web TV. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to get all our updates as soon as they go online. I'm Claire Varley and we'll see you back here at the Pasco Vale Hotel soon.